How's it going, guys? Good. You got a pamphlet? I do, yeah, yeah. I got a card if you want to take a card and a pamphlet if you want. There's a couple options here. I like to read. Right on, hey, open minded guy. Very nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm like like I get I get, you know, your your beliefs and stuff. Sure. And, you know, I still eat meat. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I do like vegan cuisine. Nice. And I try I try to do whatever I can to help out. But I'm sorry about that. I'm never getting no meat. <laughs> yeah, I used to say the same thing, you know, never say never. Uh, have you tried the alternatives and stuff? I have. Yeah. I have. But I'm never going to eat it with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, is it, uh, what do you think it is about the dead flesh that you prefer over an alternative, a cruelty-free option? The taste. The taste. Sure, sure. Yeah. It, it I'll just... tell you what, man. No one ever goes vegan because they stop liking the taste of meat, you know? They go vegan because they realize their taste buds alone aren't worth more than the life of, like, an innocent individual. That's all. That's all. Yeah. It's not a personal, you know, belief. I, yeah, I don't have an opinion on this. It's just all science. I'm sure people. So, it's how also long my. Have you been vegan? About three and a half years now. What changed you? Uh, I I didn't know that humans didn't have to eat meat, dairy, and eggs. I thought we had to. I thought we were biologically dependent. I thought every vegan must be nutrient deficient and you know starving to death. That's not the case, actually. No, the, yeah, yeah the, the healthiest people are the people eating plants. Is, so I figured, like, oh, well, I have no excuse now. I, I, I am going to say it is my God-given right. Because mm. I am. Do you think God would want you to kill someone that doesn't want to die? Um, he actually left. of Eden, God gives us plants as food and says, don't, don't abuse the other animals over here. On top, of that, on top of that, the animals that we currently consume are not natural. They're genetically modified by humans, forcibly bred into existence by the trillions to be raped, exploited, and slaughtered. Yeah, it's, it's gross, it's sadistic, and it's not at all what is in God's plan if you just look at God's words. But that book was written thousands of years ago. We're in a modern civilized society. Do you think God would really want you to be hurtful and, and cruel to his beautiful creatures? Of course not, you know, a truly it's benevolent like, God would. He just said we can dominate his animals. Does that mean we should though? Just because we can. I can I mean, go around raping people. Does, I, does that mean I should? Wait, <laughs> of course should not. should the willing. I should what? You should the willing. Huh. Here, here's the thing. God does say rape is bad. So he said, he does say animal, eating animals is okay. The Bible also says racism is okay and abusing women is okay. So there's things that we can use. God also gave us moral agency as humans. So we can see the difference between right and wrong and know how to choose. And so us making yeah, that that's, choice, that's God's power he gave to that's, us. That's, that's, when, that's when Jesus came in and, said, and changed the whole thing. <laughs> but he didn't change the whole, whole thing, mm -hmm. you know. He did, he did, but like, you know, because the Old Testament, yes, God is a vengeful God, but the New Testament is more forgiving. More sure, extended. sure, right. Gives, gives his children free will. So we have the free will to do what we think within the guidelines. Sure. That's okay. Right, right. So, like, again, you know, big ups to you, man, yeah. for doing if it. If you're in a room with God and Satan and a baby pig, and one had a knife they were handing to you to say, cut that pig's throat for no reason, no reason except your own ego and your taste buds, your human supremacist and your narcissism, who would be giving you that knife, you think, God or Satan? Seems pretty, seems pretty clear. It's a completely needless murder of an innocent animal that can feel pain, that has a family, brothers, sisters, moms that they love. Uh, be clear. I don't think it's clear either. Oh, really? Clean. What would you think? Would you think it's God? No, no you, you were thinking think Satan. Based on, based on what we know about what, what these religions entail, God was a compassionate individual. So I would say Satan is the one bringing out bloodshed and needless death, whereas God would advise against that. Yeah, as if it's but needless. If you're starving, I don't exactly. Think God. That's why I was saying if it's needless. So in a survival situation, veganism by definition just means reduce the cruelty in your life as much as possible and practicable. It doesn't mean if you're starving, let yourself die. You know, if you if doctor gives you two drugs, one was tested on animals, one wasn't. Take the one that wasn't tested yeah. on animals. You know, you have the freedom to choose. If you don't get to choose, your life okay. is at stake. Take the one that was tested on animals. You're still vegan. You reduce your cruelty could, as much as possible. Could, could yeah. we go? Could we go 50-50? Could I not do tested animal products and still eat? Uh, that would be a plant. That would be a plant-based diet. You would be like living partially plant-based, is what that would mean—a plant-based lifestyle. Uh, but veganism is the ethical stance that opposes needless rape and murder. So, if you, if the thing is, needless is the key kind of key word there. You know, if you don't need to kill someone, why are we killing someone? Why are we be being cruel when we can choose to be compassionate? That's all. Right. See, no. but, but the thing is, it's like. 
No, I wasn't, what I was about to say, I just disproved myself in my head. And feel free to take a look at the footage too. This is all RSPCA approved grass red, grass fed free range, you know, humane slaughter. And you can see the amount of suffering and torture that happens. So, you know, I've seen, I've it's, seen plenty of those. it's hard to kill someone, show compassion. Like, do you believe in animal abuse? Do you support animal abuse? Totally. <laughs> I just wanted to be one of those. Oh. People say all the time, no, you'd be surprised. People are always like, yeah, I do. I think animals deserve to be slaughtered for us. You know, they think that, like what I used to it's, think, it's, that they're put here for us to use and it's exploit. Kind of, it's kind of, no offense, it's yeah. a good question, but kind of a loaded question. Because if I say, no, I'm not. <laughs> right, then you're a hypocrite. Then, then, then it's like, oh, yeah. what, about, what about all the chickens? It's like, yeah. what about the chickens? I already know about the chickens. I, they had that, that one fucking wall like last, last year. They lived try to stop like overcrowding with chickens. Sure, right, right. I remember that. I don't, I can't remember. We keep getting these laws to give them slightly bigger spaces over time, but they still trample over. You can see the footage in here. They're cramped by the thousands into barns. That's called free range. They trample over each other. They're sitting in disease and squalor, chewing each other's body parts off because they're still so tightly cramped. Yeah, it really is. And they, they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for us as consumers. This is one of the few things in the world that we actually have power over. You know, we, it's hard to stop people dropping bombs over and, you know, on black and brown people overseas and stuff like that. But this is actually something that is only driven by consumers. So you can save hundreds of innocent animal lives a year and humans who are exploited, you know. Most of the world's landmass is used to grow crops to feed the livestock. It's completely needless. We take this land from second and third world indigenous peoples and it all gets funneled up to first world nations gluttonously feeding themselves these animal agriculture products. We actually produce enough crops to feed all the starving people of the world three times over, but we waste it away on cows that eat six to 12 times what a human would need. So this is the privilege of our first world countries, you know, that we're we're victimizing humans, exploiting humans in this process at an alarming rate as well. So there's just so many reasons ethically to just abstain from cruelty. You know, it's so easy nowadays when you go to the store, instead of grabbing the cruelty product, move your arm this way. There's a cruelty free product right next to it, you know. I think what all do is people are just really lazy. Sure, yeah. And if you go vegan, you're having to fix <laughs> all these yummy vegetables. And <laughs> yeah. It's actually for steak, you just put seasoning. Seasoning bacon. which is plants, right? So what we're tasting when we eat the meat is plants. So I put the same seasonings I would have put on my meat. It's just I'm, I'm taking out the dead flesh, which is carcinogenic, you know, it's cancer causing. It's got all these stress hormones that, you know, your body becomes a cemetery for dead bodies. It's just not, not good for your cognitive functioning or your physical health overall. So yeah, I was like, you know, this, if I can choose, if I have the freedom to choose, why would I choose to be cruel over compassionate? Yeah. It's so delicious. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, no I vegan. I eat a lot of meat, so yeah. I can't really say. Right, right. Yeah, I used to love meat too, man. You, you, you wouldn't believe. All I ate, my, my diet was uh, dairy, eggs, and meat, 24/7. Hated vegetables, hated plants. Oh, wouldn't look. go near them. Uh, and then I realized that you know it only took me about three days to three weeks for my taste buds to completely change. You know, your palate is adaptive, so you know it'll get used to what you're eating. If you're used to you know eating the dead flesh of an innocent individual, you're gonna start to crave that. Um, especially dairy. Dairy's got casomorphine in it. It's to keep the baby cow coming back to the mother, recognize and love the mother. We're eating the most concentrated form of those hormones. And we're actually rewiring our brain to be very much like the way uh, a heroin addict is addicted to something. It's the same wiring in the brain. It's in case of morphine, it's very much like morphine. So when we eat those, it's hard to break free from them. They give us this endorphin release, like we're loved by cheese or something, you know, it's so good to us. Uh, it's hard to break those habits, but if you just give it, you know, some people to few days, some people to few weeks, on average, it's like 22 days to break a habit. But um, if you just give it, you know, give an ethical lifestyle a try for that amount of time, you might be surprised at how good you feel, how much your taste buds have adapted, uh, and you know, how much less cruelty you're, you're putting out into the world. Yeah. I just like try to. I know, I used to work in the meat department of a grocery store for 11 years and I was the guy barbecuing the tri-tip every day. I was, the, I was the best guy in town. You would be at the best barbecue tri-tip, seasoned it perfectly, cooked it perfectly. People were coming back by the hundreds every day just because I was the one out there cooking it. Uh, There's a sense of pride that kind of came with that. But over the years I realized, you know, there are just as good uh, plant-based options. You know, now I make my own seitan tri-tip. It's just made out of beans and you, you smash it up. You make it at home really easy. It doesn't require a lot of time or effort or education. Like you were saying, you know, a lot of people are lazy. 
Well, what's cool about veganism is it doesn't require extra action. It's actually non-action. It's choosing not to fund cruelty. So, you, like I said, when you have the freedom to choose, just stop being cruel. You know, if someone says, hey, would you like to murder this young animal or this young child? You can say, no, I'm, I'm good, thanks. You know, you can simply, it's that. It's choosing not to go ahead and then additionally add on more murder and death out into the world where there's already so much suffering already. But isn't vegan like everything, clothing-based, everything? Mm-hmm, yeah. So when we buy a leather belt, you know, you're, you're paying to have an animal, Off have their belt. skin peeled off yeah, leather you know purses and stuff like that yeah <laughs> whatever <Mistake>. it is <laughs> nice and most see that's i have a leather jacket I, I usually wear to showcase how you can still look just as stylish as you did before you know it's most of it actually available nowadays isn't real leather you know because it's just so resource intensive to harvest an animal's life just to peel their skin off and dry it out yeah it's not really profitable for the company so they're moving to man-made leather that's how easy it is nowadays though you know you just go choose the cruelty free option you know? yeah their taste buds will adapt my 13 year old would totally agree with me. Should be a nice day with you. <laughs> hey, right on. Yeah. Hey, well, uh, would you like my card? It's just some information on the back. If you guys are curious about uh, the health benefits, the, the you know ethical aspect or the environmental benefits of going vegan, you can just Google or YouTube any of that stuff and find some great info. Well, thank you. Of course. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Very kind, open minded. My name is Jackson. Yeah. Jackson. I'm always happy open minded. <laughs> it's great. Whether, whether we disagree or not. Right, right, um, yeah. I don't disagree, <laughs> nice. but I just am the real person that's like, um, I yeah. don't know, it's going to be really, really hard. Yeah. My daughter tried to go vegan and I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be too hard. She's like, no mom, I don't want to kill that. You know? Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. She did it for like three weeks and then her friend like made her plate at her house mm -hmm. and had chicken on it. I'm like, um. Well, you just broke it, so now you got to eat meat. <laughs> Starting over again. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, it, you know what? A lot of people think it's it's difficult, and radical, and extreme. And you know, what? maybe even five, ten years ago, it would have been uh, really difficult. But in a modern society, especially in Chico here, where we have so many great alternatives, uh, it's really, really easy to transition. Like I said, when you go to the store, move your hand from this way, twelve inches to the right. Usually, there's a cruelty-free option right there. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be so difficult. I'm a pretty lazy person. Uh, but, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, very rewarding, the best decision I ever made in my life, especially for all the countless benefits. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, that's great that you're so honest. I, I was probably the first person in six or seven months that I've talked to after doing this every week that is able to recognize, you know what, I am a little bit hypocritical because I believe that animals shouldn't be needlessly abused, but I still am in the habit of doing the thing that I was raised into doing, you know, just kind of eating without really thinking about who, whose flesh this meat came from or whose secretions, you know, in dairy, we have to rape these cows. We go in their fist first up in their anus. Yeah, and then when the baby's born, that baby can't drink the milk because we gotta have that milk so that baby gets a knife across the throat. The mother cows, seeing footage of the mother cows re respond, it's like the way a human mother would just screams and bellows for weeks, sometimes months on end, pacing back and forth, running around screaming. It's, it's really horrifying. Yeah, it's sadistic stuff. That cow wouldn't be in that position if it wasn't for us. So I just realized, yeah, maybe I'll align my actions with my morality. I claim to be opposed to animals, so in order to avoid being a hypocrite, I guess it's finally time that I just cut out that product, replace it with some beans or something, you know, yeah. Hey guys.